another aspect that is um, that I mentioned earlier is the uh, limbic system. So I want to get a little bit more into that here. So in the limbic system, so it's back here in the in the stem of the brain, um, and as you can see on the screen, it's kind of deep in the part of the brain, and it's in charge of what is known as the flight or fight system. So again, if the if the amygdala senses that there's any sort of threat in the environment, this part of the brain is going to kick on and then start. it starts a series of messages to the rest of the body and the brain. And what happens is the parts of the body and the brain that are turned on are the parts that are going to keep us alive. So we're going to get blood rushing to our extremities, so our legs and our arms, so that we can either run away or so that we can fight. Um, or, and then also the um, systems that are turned off are the things that aren't necessary for staying alive. So that's our digestive system as well as our arousal system, meaning our, our sexual arousal and desire. And so if these parts of our bodies are turned off, then like I said, we're not going to be able to have an orgasm or have a pleasurable sexual experience because that part of the body is not um, encouraged to be turned on at that moment. And I mean turned on by, I mean activated, as well as physically turned on and feeling the effects um, that is needed to have a pleasurable sexual experience. And when this, and this can occur either at the moment of sexual activity or it can occur hours before even. If, if a person is feeling anxious about the idea of sex or sexuality or their body, the system, the body, the system um, and the brain is going to be in this survival mode so blood won't be flowing to the right parts of the area in order to have um, the parts of our body that we need um, stimulated or aroused. And one way to be able to sort of counteract this experience when it's not necessary, so when we're not threatened with our lives and when we're not needing to stay alive in that moment, um, then what one way that we can help our amygdala calm down so that it's only activated when absolutely necessary is to induce what's called a relaxation response. And this isn't an automatic um, occurrence, like the, uh, unlike the flight or fight system. The, the amygdala is triggered in an, automatic, uh, in an automatic way. But the, the relaxation response is needed to be turned on by practice. And it's something that we have to be intentional about. Uh, a recent study came out saying that even doing 21 days of guided meditation can start to change the way that our brains work, as well as how we can start to reduce anxiety and depression. And so the relaxation response is wonderfully activated by doing meditation or mindful awareness. Meditation can be extremely hard if you're just trying to sit down and you've had no formal experience or teachings on it, and just trying to sit down and do it is really difficult because oftentimes we sit there thinking, am I doing this right? I don't know. There are a lot of thoughts in my head, like, oh, what, what, what did I do yesterday? And what do I have to do tomorrow? And then suddenly a few minutes have gone by and you realize that you've been in your head in these whirling thoughts, which is actually not a way to meditate but just trying to be focused on the breath and being aware that this happens and trying to always constantly return to the breath, or return to the meditation. But because um, those thoughts come in very often, it's helpful to be able to have some sort of formal training to be able to help your brain and support your, your body and your breath and your mind to try and figure out exactly how to work with those thoughts, because they're going to come in. It happens to even the people who have been practicing for 30 plus years, it happens. Um, and the focus is just on returning back to the breath. So um, some of the ways to be able to, to get some training on this is by either doing it in psychotherapy with a practitioner who knows how to work with meditation and mindful awareness, or by taking some classes. Um, UCLA, if you're local to Los Angeles, uh, they have 
um, Mark um, Research Center. It's on Mindful Awareness Research Center, so M-A-R-C. Uh, they have classes that um, run every all year, and then you can also do them online too if you're not local to UCLA or not local to Los Angeles. These classes are absolutely wonderful, and it gives a, a little bit of of the theory as well as the practice of mindfulness and meditation. And then also, if you're um, you can do this from anywhere. Oprah and Deepak Chopra just did a 21-day meditation experience, and it's available online. Um, so if you just t type in or Google um, this experience, they'll be able to. It'll direct you to uh, the meditation experience where you can download it, and it's it goes hand in hand with the research that I had told you about um, this 21-day meditation experience. 